Hello, in this emulator video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Desmume emulator or Desmume. It's a Nintendo DS emulator and it works pretty well. So you just Google Desmume and just open this up and go to downloads. And this is on Windows. I'll have it for other OS as well. You can do it for Mac, for example, and Linux as well. I'll cover that in separate videos. And okay, so just click on this or for x86 users, which is 32 bit that is. So 32 bit is for this, 64 bit just goes straight to here. If you wanna know which one you've got, just either go to my computer or this PC as it's called in the newer versions of Windows, go to computer, system properties. If it says, ignore what it says here. If it says 32 bit, then you go for the x86. If it says 64 bit, then you will go for this one. So let's click that take it to this website and just click this. It'll download it. It's not a big file at all. So make sure you got your ROMs as well. Just want to mention this video is not condoning piracy. I assume that you legally own the games that you, you know, you have, but yeah, there you go. So just make sure you got some Nintendo DS ROMs as well. Okie dokie. So now that you've got that downloaded, one last thing, if you just Google Desmume compatibility list, and then go to this link. Again, I'll provide the link to everything in the description. And this will just show you, you know, what games are compatible. There's demo ROMs and then there's the actual ROMs as well. You can just, you know, don't think there's a search feature per se, but you can just search and then there's the, the next page as well. So this is definitely worth checking out to see if your game's compatible. Because if you look at, let's say, this one, Chaos Fury, it's the same black screen. So yeah, let's bear that in mind, have a look, see what games are compatible. I'll be using Advanced Wars. I know that it's compatible and I've tested it as well. Okay, so we can close this down. We can go to where we downloaded everything. For me, it's in local disk downloads, E drive, Chrome, and here we go. So we got it right here. This is the one I just downloaded. So I'll delete the other one that I had from before. And double click that. If this pops up, click more info, run anyway. And there we go, here's your emulator. And I've got the Nintendo DS ROM in .NDS format. That's what you need it to be in. And if I open up the emulator again, let's go through a few settings before we launch the game up. So in view, you can change your LCD layout. So right now we've got the top screen here and the bottom screen there, which will appear when we load, launch a game. You can make it horizontal, which is pretty darn cool. You can have one LCD if you want. And you can change it, you know, bottom first, main screen first, or top first default. That's what I'll leave it at. You can rotate it, you know, mess around with window size. You can even do a gap as well, which is really useful. I'll show you that afterwards once I launch the game so you can actually see what that's looking like. And there's a few full screen options as well, but for the most part, you'll probably leave it as is. You can display some, you know, debug stuff like frame rate and that. And now in config, you can do frame skip. And in emulation settings, I mean, you can use an external BIOS, but for the most part, you probably leave this as is. And 3D settings, I recommend that you change this to OpenGL. If you, are, if you don't have a dedicated graphics card that has OpenGL, then just use the soft rasterizer, which, all, which is a software-based you know, rendering engine. That'll just use your CPU. So yeah, so uh, you can change the GPU scaling factor, texture scaling, you can increase that. Just experiment. First, just get it running virtually as default, then up stuff and see how it runs on your machine. You can do multi-sample anti-aliasing, which will help get rid of the jaggies around objects. So feel free to check that out and click OK. So there we go, it's changed it. And doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm gonna, where, where was I? Okay, so we had just done the 3D settings, the sound settings, you can have a look at it. I recommend you leave it as default as firmware microphone settings. Again, for the most part, you're probably gonna leave most things as default. For slot one, again, recommend that you leave it as default. You can auto detect save type, that's good. ROM loading, you can just leave that as is. You can load entirety to ROM. There's a long start time, and there's high you know, RAM usage, but it is technically faster. But honestly, you probably won't have much of an issue anyway. And we'll skip that for now. There's hotkey config, Wi-Fi settings, so you can 
enable Wi-Fi emulation and choose the network adapter as well, which is quite cool. You can change the path if you want to automatic, you know, if you want to change where the save states, the screenshots and all that other stuff will go. So if you do want that, you can mess around with that here and the display methods set that to OpenGL as well if you changed it in the other area. And for the most part, that's it. So if we go back to here, control config, this is where you can map your controls. If you have an external controller like a Xbox controller, you can try and configure this as well. I'll do videos trying to configure it with a separate controller, but for now we'll just use keyboard for this. So by default is selected up. So if I press up, it goes to the next one. If I was to put down, for example, it's saying there's a conflict because, well, down was already used. So let's do left, you know, down. Let's say if I was to, to put this as T, which is I know is unused, I'll put right. I mean, really, that's it. And you can, you know, kill stylus on top of screen and kill stylus off screen as well. And there's a few other features in the emulator that you can check out. So click OK. Now let's open up our game. So I had already opened it up, but you can just go to File, Open ROM. But again, you can just go to Recent ROM. So let's say Open ROM. And there we go. Double click there. Here we go. So this is what I was I'm going to turn the volume down. This is what I was saying. The, the gap, there is a gap there. But I mean, there's no gap, but these are the two screens. If you want to kind of distinguish between the two screens, Go to view, screen gap, let's say, you can go to big border, so but D is small. I personally prefer narrow border and I usually change it to something like a black one as well. I think that, that's my personal preference. And you can pause the game as well and you can resume. So uh, so if you, if you just click on it, obviously we have the controls configured as well. So enter will go forward for now Let's just go back so it's, it is nice and cool because the ds is a touch screen you know system we can literally just easily just click we can just go single ds play just use mouse and that's honestly probably the easiest w way of doing it and go you know you can enable full screen as well but i'll just keep you at this for now And you will let me select the character and move it back. Select, go and click wait, and there we go. Okay, I'm not gonna do much more than that. What you can also do is save state. So I forgot save state, save state, and it has been saved to slot one. If let's say I close the game down, and let's say if I was to launch this back up. And let's say if I was to open up recent ROM. It launches it up from the start. If I go to file load state, which is for this game, it takes me back to exactly where I was. So if you're in a game and let's say in the middle of a game, you pause it and you just can't save it at that moment, you can just save state. So that is one of the great things about emulators. You can, you know, take screenshots, you can record some sound, you can record video as well. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do here. And uh, you can get some ROM info. So it gives you information about this particular game as well. So they can even see like, oh, in Japan, it was may potentially called something different. So that's a nice little cool thing. And, but yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. So that's it, that's the Des, Desmoomi. I mean, let me know how you pronounce it. Emulator for DS. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the Discord group. There's a link in the description and there'll be like Desmium and emulator channels. So feel free to post there. All the links that you'll need will be in the description and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.